Deepak, thank you very much for being with us. We are very happy to have you with us again. Uh, Deepak, we'd like you to ask you about uh, the future of the business schools. What are the major challenges of the business schools at this time? Before I answer your question, I want to thank you for including me in this great occasion. Now regarding, there are two parts. One, the future of management schools and the other thing I see is more on management education also. Because schools may be there, but with the technology coming, what the roles of schools would be, and then the other part is management education. So let me give you my perspectives on what I see is happening. First, I really believe that schools have to move towards being more international. By international, I mean both at the input level, which means getting more international students, and also at the throughput level, which means more international case studies, professors, and others. Because the world, to me, is becoming boundaryless. So a student graduating from IPADE tomorrow can be in Spain, tomorrow can be in Luxembourg, or in Asia, and others. So the more we give a global exposure to students, the better we are preparing them for the future. The second thing I really believe is the duration of the program. I think there is a tendency more towards like a one-year program rather than a two-year program. Good time to me would become very critical. And if you look at the world, many schools especially the new ones are thinking of more a one-year program. So globalization, duration, and the third that I think for management schools would be that MBA degree is going to be there, but schools ought to look at more specialized programs. And those specialized programs would be consistent with the theme of one year, like a master's, in healthcare, a master's in real estate, a master's in hospitality management, in private wealth management, people are getting rich. The specialized master's program of one year. This, I think, would become quite a norm uh, because many people may like to go for MBA, but if you remember this morning, there were two very significant points made. One that MBAs turn out to be very expensive right. because of the MBA degree they command. And second was a touch of arrogance. Right. With master students, you can hire them at a much reasonable salary. And I think you can, their ego would also be more under control as opposed to the word MBA. That does not mean that MBA would disappear. Mm -hmm. The fourth trend that I see among MBA schools and it's not a concern for IPA day, but I feel the market is going to be segmented. That means value for the brand and value for money. Value for the brand, I mean the top schools, the Harvard, Stanford, MIT, Kellogg, Chicago, Columbia, Wharton, NCAD, LBS, IMD, and that. Those schools would have an evergreen demand because students would love to go because value for the right. brand. And that brand can let them get the salary that they are looking for right. and whatever it is. Prestige. And the prestige. And right. the, the, what I call reputation is the currency. Is the currency. Right. Then the second set would be the state schools because they are also the quality of faculty is very good and they have a much better uh, tuition and that's what I call value for money. Value for money, right. Now, at least in the US, I feel that schools in between, which are quote unquote private schools, mm -hmm. high tuition, they may get sandwiched. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they good. have to think about some new offerings. Mm -hmm. And my suggestion to many of them would be to create this specialized master's program as opposed to rely on the traditional MBA. Not that MBAs would disappear from them. But given the location they are in, 
they can think of good masters program that right. can be there the other thing and this is slightly more radical but i think time has come for us to rethink about is mba education or not mba the management education more a graduate education or we should think of the wharton model or some schools and think of creating very good undergraduate programs undergraduate. in management but rigorous because if you look at the wharton program with very limited knowledge i have students get very good training so can we think of a bachelor's degree in management which is as analytical as the masters and given the duration is 4 years they can become very good candidates mm-hmm. for the job and later on they become candidates for executive mba right. they right. get a bachelor's and then they want to go and they can go for the executive mbas so i am rethinking about earlier i was never a supporter of uh, undergraduate manage but not with the just the same mba type undergraduate because i feel as a parent every parent would like their child to get a bachelor's degree right and if eventually you want to go into management can we create a more i would say hard science based bachelor's degree mm-hmm. which has both academic rigor and business relevance and for their own when they get some experience mm-hmm. they can take the executive, executive MBA. mba or some executive programs like the amp of the harvard right. and the others right. because they there they need to see how education has evolved right. and plus the friendships the networks they create the, one topic was the globalization that you mentioned the other one is about the technology yes how the technology is challenging the business schools the way uh, they teach and the way they train the professors with all this new technology is this changing i am still not convinced that technology would replace classroom teaching what i feel is technology can make the educational experience more effective technology can help the classroom experience or make the classroom experience richer 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 because you don't have to spend the time on going over the basic fundamentals right so that's how technology can now the second derivative it will say is like a is a tool is a tool is a tool but something a tool that can also translate into right. knowledge right and then this would lead to my second concern the leverage leverage, leverage. and some of these courses if you take through technology that can also help you reduce the duration of the program yeah, that's right so if if duration is a concern technology can help you have an mba program as effective as it was mm-hmm. and since the new generation i see in my children they are technologically that savvy mm-hmm. they can learn these things through that media mm-hmm. and make classroom teaching more interactive So I am I am in favor of technology and how whatever technology we can bring but not think of technology as a substitute for a classroom right. experience all your experience uh, I think you are dean of deans because you have been dean in in, in different business schools and uh, you were a lot of a lot of time in, at the with the dean at Kellogg before you were dean yes and with all your experience and your knowledge about ipade what would you recommend for the next uh, 50 years for ipade now that you you have seen the history of ipade since it was born went through these 50 years growing being in many cities and uh, developing their own programs their own courses the material the research and relationship with other business schools in the world and uh, of course with you you've been a lot of help with us what would you recommend for the future of ipade i would like ipade to explore like we did at the kellogg school if you can have some joint programs with some other institutions in different parts of the world okay. like kellogg hong kong program the kellogg germany program and the others because our students can get exposure so our students would go there for two weeks their students coming mm-hmm. 
and whether it is a dual degree program, a joint degree program or the students from other university get an IPADE certificate, IPADE students getting a certificate from others, some level of global partnership you should explore because you have established a very good brand by now. And whether it can be in the, uh, in the Americas, it can extend to the Europe or the Asia, but my first thing would be within this part of the world. The second thing, listening to all the talks that I have seen, you have built a very strong network of non-degree programs also. And you may be already doing that. This is my personal feeling that not everyone tomorrow may go for a full MBA. Can you create some corporate specific programs of longer duration? Mm -hmm. Because I think a time would come when a company like Google or Microsoft would come to a university and say, I want X number of my students to be trained. Mm -hmm. And they may like to get an MBA for their students. The other thing, I don't know whether you do it or not, more demand is coming for flexible offerings. Yes. So what I mean by flexible offerings is, you do very good non-degree programs. Can somehow some of these non-degree programs be converted into course credit? People who have taken IPADES yes. X programs convert it to course credit and with these credits and some new courses they take, they can get an executive MBA or something degree. So I really believe that time has come for us to make the non-degree executive education product into a certified product. Certified product. Because you have heard this, um, me say this, that we have three missions in a business school, knowledge creation through research, knowledge dissemination through teaching and then knowledge certification because we can give a master's degree, bachelor's degree or a diploma. When people come for non-degree programs, they get a diploma, they get a certificate. But if they want to build all these certificates into a degree, can we think about offering these programs in such a way that after, in within a five year period, if you take these many courses, they can be converted into the regular coursework plus now you take the other and you can have a more efficient either part-time MBA, I don't know what you call it, or an executive MBA or a flexible MBA, mm -hmm. something which is not just, which gives flexibility to the candidate in terms of pursuing his or her aspirations. The back, uh, final question, uh, technology is advancing pretty fast and students, sometimes we notice that students are more knowledgeable about the technology than the professors. That is so true. the challenge is, how do you train the professors in this technology so they keep, they keep up with the students or they are, you know, in a higher level than the students? Because you already have the professors and uh, many of them, uh, uh, they don't manage the technology as they choose. I think this is about managing and setting expectations. Okay. What I mean is for professors to change or change their style of teaching is more difficult than letting the students know that yes, technologically you are savvy. The way I would do that is have the students and the professor or the in charge of the program sit down and see what they expect from the professor. And if there are certain things that are necessary today, we can create a short program for the professors in terms of that these are the minimum things that you would require, students would love this way as opposed to the other. Okay. Because I think time has come, for example, if you ask me today, I don't feel comfortable teaching an MBA class. Executive MBA still, the students would be of uh, our type. Yes. But MBAs are so savvy that I think I cannot be with them. 
and not that i cannot teach i don't know the content but it would be more the pedagogical mm-hmm. style mm-hmm. and the language too and the, and, and, the, and, the, and the language too and the, the language too so there are several options you have one is to let the young professors teach the core classes mm-hmm. and the senior professors teach electives where there is a self selection among students right. so that is a, a simple way to do that the second is have a group of technology consultants in the school who become they, they become like a resource for the professors okay so the professors can go to them and say that this is what students are asking the advisors. advisors but a group of technology experts support. and the so support the technology support for the students and they are in ch- connect with the students and the professors mm-hmm. so they are the middle people but you don't need too many but they become like a resource for the professors right. to say that this is what i would like to do right. and so on because i'm not sure that how many professors would now decide right. to learn that and is that the best thing for us to have the professor learn that or invest in the professor to learn new more about the sub- new developments in that subject right. sub subject but in the new developments of the subject maybe more like technology marketing right or how the new social media can help you teach right. things better than others so that can be there but this is something that we have to think about and i haven't given much thought to how we train that what i call train the trainers train the trainers yeah, train the trainers okay the fact thank you very but much. i can t- just i want to tell you i don't think that the future of management education is any dull or anything management education is evergreen more demand would come from the global side different parts of the world they would be looking for management education but business as usual may not be the right way to deliver and so we need to adapt to the changing circumstances but the mba market to me is as ever green as possible now this movement uh, against the globalization against the free market and more conservative you think this uh, like a uh, trump and others in the in europe is this a temporary thing that uh, because it, it doesn't go along with the trend for 50 years we've been on this trend you think this is a step back or it is i think see these politicians are trying to create a differentiation on that dimension that is there as they say in mother mother nature they say that water seeks its own level or whatever it is right i think human beings will find a way out to do things wherever they have to look for efficiency and effectiveness both and i think reversing the trend can only create negative consequences rather than any positive long term i think we have to ride the wave of globalization we need to ask ourselves that we are in the business of developing human talent right that's our core product and treat the businesses government etc as our partners right. how we can help them technology may be a tool lot of other factors may help us but my thing is human beings are not going to become a substitute right they, cool. they are going to be there and we need to do our best to build them okay thank you very much thank you